From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I mean, this is the office of Jake. Dollar, you're the one I want to talk to. Huh? You heard me. I want you to meet me alone. Oh, who are you? Tell you when and where in a second. And don't come carrying a gun, because, mister, I can outdraw you two to one. Who is this? They call me Hard Luck Dennis. Oh, you planning to add another murder to that of the Hasco brothers? Thirteen miles out of Kingman on the highway east. Little side road to the right, Mark Yucca Trail. Now listen. A mile and a quarter on, you'll see an old miner shack. Be there at three o'clock sharp. And what if I Remember decide Remember what to... I told you. Bring somebody with you or try anything funny and you'll never get out of this desert alive. Hello. Hmm. Had that call from me, Johnny? No. No, it wasn't, Jake. Hmm? But I wonder why a killer would call me. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Kingman, Arizona, to the Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability Company. Following is a report of expenditures during my investigation of the Midas Touch matter. Jake Kessler, local representative for Greater Southwest Insurance and Liability, had laid it out pretty clearly. The three Haskell brothers, prosperous gentlemen ranchers, had taken out life policies totaling a million and a half dollars double indemnity which meant that their death in what was supposed to look like an accident at the bottom of the Midas Touch Mine could cost Southwest a cool three million. And the finger of suspicion pointed straight at one hard luck Dennis, prospector and promoter. It was in Jake Kessler's office that I'd received the phone call from hard luck. Where did hard luck tell you to meet him, Johnny? Oh, uh, I'll find it all right. Where? Look, uh, I think I'd better handle this alone, Jake. Uh, Johnny... He's being hunted by every available policeman here in Kingman. He's a killer. Like I told you, he got 20000 apiece from the Haskell brothers' cash. Then took him down to the Midas Touch and caved it in on him. All right, even supposing that he did. Why would he do it? Well, daggone it, that's as obvious as those two heads you're wearing. The mine is worthless. How do you know? Because smarter people than him gave it up over 20 years ago. I thought you told me the ore samples he brought out are say at $1,100 a ton. Oh. Now, look, Johnny, you know as well as I do that there's more ways to salt a gold mine than there is to skin a cat. You have any proof that Hardluck salted that one? No, but Tad Harding will. Who? Captain Tad Harding, please. He hasn't lived out in this country all his life for nothing. Where's Harding now? At the Midas Touch. But when he gets back here, you see him. He'll show you that I'm right. Well, if you are, it certainly would point the finger at Hardluck Dennis, wouldn't it? Can't you understand, Johnny? Hard luck needed money. He's always needed money. He salted that mine, got 60000 from the Haskells on a lick and a promise, then caved in the mine on him before they could get wise to him. Good theory. You'll find it's a fact. That's why he skipped out as soon as he... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't have skipped very far, could he? And if he were guilty, why would he want to see me? All right, Johnny. Now listen to me. The Haskells mm. were three of our finest citizens. So the whole town will cooperate with you. So don't do anything foolish like meeting that hard luck Dennis alone. That willingness to cooperate includes you, Jake? You know it does. I'll do anything. All right, then just give me your word you won't tell anyone that I'm meeting hard luck. Well, now, Because if you do, I'll drop this case like a hot potato. Hmm. Well? Okay, Johnny. For the time being. Okay. I uh, just noticed out the window. Tad Harding's car just pulled up in front of police headquarters. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Captain Tad Harding turned out to be a tall, well-built, cool-headed man of about 40 who impressed me as being able to cope with any situation that might arise. He bore out everything Jake Kessler had told me about the Haskells and about hard luck. And he added two new and very important bits of information. One, that he'd found nothing whatsoever to indicate that the Midas touch had been salted. On the contrary, he'd picked up some very rich chunks of ore. Two, he'd learned the probable cause of the cave-in and what it meant. I told you it was murder, Johnny. I told you. Tad Harding had found a length of wire rope, one end wrapped around the spool of a powerful hand winch. 
The other end had very obviously been tied around a pillar, a thick pillar of rock and gravel that had been dug around so as to leave support for the ceiling of a horizontal shaft. Jake and I walked back to his office. That's it, Johnny, no doubt about it, no doubt. A few quick turns of the handle on that winch, the pillar came down and the roof caved in. I'll have to admit it certainly looks that way. Well, at least the company's off the hook for a million and a half of the insurance. If we can prove that somebody operated that winch while the Haskells were down there. Now, now, look, And Johnny, that means I... finding that person. I'm satisfied it was murder. Would the courts be? The courts? Sure. When the claims on these policies are filed, they'll be for three million on the basis of double indemnity for accidental deaths. You can bet your last penny on that. Claims haven't been filed yet, have they? Oh, no. Well, I hope we'll have time before they are. Time? To prove it was murder by producing the murderer. You, uh, you still plan to see and talk to hard luck, Dennis? Yep. Alone? Yep. When? Sometime soon. When, Johnny? Tell you all about it after I've seen him. Johnny, it's dangerous. Say, uh, look, if I'm going to stay at that place you told me about over at Lake Mojave, I may as well go and get settled, huh? How do I get there? I'll drive you over, Johnny. No point in that. I've got my rented car. Well, you'll probably want to be seeing the mine, too. Maybe I can be of help to you. Or maybe you just want to be present if I happen to keep a date with hard luck tennis. Now, I didn't say that. You didn't need to. Jake, I want you to stay right here in Kingman so you can keep in touch with whatever the police dig up and still be in touch with me. There's a phone at the Lake Mojave Resort, isn't there? Well, sure, Johnny. Also, but I don't did. forget that $3 million claim may be filed here at your office any minute. If so, I want to know about it. Now, how do I get to Lake Mojave? Head east on Highway 68, he said. So I did. And 13 miles out of town, I found the little side road, Yucca Trail, that Hard Luck had described over the phone. The next mile and a quarter was about the worst driving I ever encountered. This was nothing but an old wagon trail. Several times, the crankcase and rear axle scraped on boulders in the middle of it. The trail had dropped off sharply from the highway, and as far as I could see, there was nothing but sun-baked rock and gravel of the Mojave Desert, splotched here and there with withered sagebrush, tumbleweed, some weirdly shaped Joshua trees, an occasional yucca plant with its stalk poking upward like a huge candle, and too many kinds of cactus to mention. All of it surrounded by bleak needles and crags of rock by high plateaus and mesas. The going got so bad, I'd almost decided to get out and walk when I spotted the old miner's shack that Hardluck had named as our meeting place. As I approached it, I could see no sign of life around it. Hello? Anybody here? Hardluck, Dennis? Hello? Nothing. No one. No sign of life at all, huh? The sudden movement at the corner of the shack was nothing but an ancient desert turtle plodding at what he probably thought was breakneck speed toward a shady spot under a sagebrush. Hello? Hard luck? Anyone inside there? Well... That's not... Huh? What? Should have looked round back at this shack right. Go and reach for anything, mister. Hard luck. Dolly? Yes. Yeah. You come alone, like I said? I don't see anybody else around. Stand real, stare, Dolly. Don't move. Uh, no gun. That's smart. Sit down there on that bench. Sure. Now, what's this all about, Hard Luck? I didn't do it. That's what it's all about. I didn't do it. I didn't kill the Askell boy, if you understand that. I didn't think you did. No. Why not? Because if you had, I think you would have skipped the country. You wouldn't have asked me to come here and talk to you. That's right. That's right, Dollar. Are oh, you just trying to soften me up? Not much point in that, is there, with you holding a gun on me? If you didn't do it, Hard Luck, why don't you go to the police in Kingman and tell them that? I wouldn't have a chance. Judge or jury, anything else. The whole town's against me. 
They made up their mind I did it so the best lawyer in the country couldn't save me. Apparently the whole town thought a lot of the Haskell brothers. Surely they had fine men. That's why I picked them to share the mine with me. The only reason you picked them was because they had money and you know it. Yeah, like all the rest. Didn't you see the ore they took out of the Midas touch? I heard about it. Rich, rich ore. Twelve, fifteen hundred dollars a ton. And I didn't plant it there. It's been there all the time. Even Captain Harden couldn't find where I'd sorted it because I didn't. Oh, you know that he was out there. Sure I do. I know everything that goes on in this desert. All right, then, look. Suppose you put down that gun and tell me what happened the day the mine caved in on the Haskells. You bet I'll tell you. That's why I called you. But I won't put down this gun until I'm sure you're on my side. Well, then, wave it in some other direction. You want to hear what I got to say? Then sit still and listen to me. First, tell me this. Was it murder? It was murder. Then who... But not by my hand. Then who did it? Do you know? Yes, yes, I know. Who? Uh, they wanted to see the mine again, get some more samples. That was last Friday. The day of the cave Yes, yeah, so I took them down there, gave them a pick, showed them where to chip it off, down on the second level. Go on. But then I left them there for a minute. Why? I heard a car, heard a car pull up, so I went back out, went back to see who it was. There wasn't supposed to be anybody around that mine. I had it posted. But I'd heard this car pulling up. Well, go on, go on. So I left the Haskells below and went you on. You said that. Uh, in a hurry, I went. No time for my eyes to get used to the bright sunlight outside. All I saw was the car. When I stuck my head out, that's when it hit me. What do you mean? When what hit you? A rock, a club, or something. I, and it knocked me out. When I come to, the cave was all over. The Haskells were dead in there. And I knew what everybody would think, so I lit out, stayed in the desert. Well, do you know who it was who hit you? Sure, by the car. Who? The same one that made the cave in. Who? Dollar. It was... Listen... There's somebody coming out there. You cheated me. You brought him. No, no, I did not. Hard luck. Get away from the door. Duck! Hard luck. Hard luck. Yeah, I guess they named you right. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the so-called trackless desert yields a set of tracks that lead straight to... But if I told you, you'd know, wouldn't you? So join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.